Hi guys. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys, I did put together two of the foil quill cards. So this was the happy birthday one. It's not, I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. Like I said, I, it's my mistake. I didn't change my um, speed and force setting when it was going through. So it went through way too fast. But I colored the flower in with some Arteza color pencils. And I think that came out pretty nice. And then same thing with this one. Just colored it in with regular color pencils, Arteza color pencils. So they're ready to go. Um, okay, so... I did want to tell you guys, I went online to Technique Junkie. She has a video on her um, Facebook page using the new Heidi Swap Mink Toner Ink. Okay, So previously, if you've seen my videos before, this was probably, I don't know, two years ago. I took these two products, which are Heidi Swap Re Reactive Screen Ink and Heidi Swap Reactive Paint, and I put them in one of the Tim Holtz Make Your Own Ink Pads, and I did make a stamp pad with them. The problem is that the stamp pad did dry out, which is what I suspect is going to happen with the toner. Although I was thinking today, I don't have any, but I bet I could try to use the cut and dry foam. I don't have any of that. So... What I did, and the second problem I was having was it's so super sticky, it pulls up the paper. So I thought, okay, let me see if I can come up with a resolution because I did order the toner ink. It's already shipped, so before you guys run out and buy it, if you want to see my thoughts on it, it'll be here in the next couple days, so next week sometime, beginning of March. Um, but what I did was I made my own. So this is a piece of foam from Hobby Lobby. This had those giant snowflakes on it. It had like four giant snowflake um, pins on it. And so this is the foam and it's a pretty soft foam. And so what I did today was I started with this reactive screen ink, which they named these wrong. They should have called this one paint and this one ink. Um, this one's white when it goes down. And I just used the top of a or expired um, gift card. I put it on here and I stamped with it. And then I went up to the sink and I washed my stamp and I washed everything off and it came off no problem. And then I did it with the reactive paint. Now the reactive paint is not my favorite for a number of reasons. Number one, it's really um, liquidy um, and it dries super quick. So you get these strings almost like a spider webs or when you're doing... Um, uh, hot glue, you kind of get those strings as it's drying. That's what happens with this. I do like the reactive screen ink because it's a little thicker. It it goes down like a paint. So I wanted to show you what I did. So I solved, I think I solved the problem of using a spongy pad instead of a Tim Holtz felt pad. And then I decided, oh, let me experiment with some paper. So I have this chrome coat cover from Marco's Paper. And this, if you guys have seen me use this before, it's very similar to glossy cardstock, but it is not photo paper, okay? It is glossy on one side, and then it's matte on the other side, but it's pretty good um, paper. So I stamped with my Las Vegas King Tut um, stamp all of these earlier today with the, this is this reactive ink. I keep wanting to call it pink. So I stamped it, stamped it off. I could see where there were some areas where I didn't get good coverage. And I let it dry completely. And then on here, I have the reactive paint, which is the clear. And I did it on the glossy side of the cardstock. And then on here, I did it on the back side. Although I did not get a good impression here. But I'm really interested to see how this glossy card comes out. Because to me, it looks like it's stamped pretty good. All right. So I have to make this pretty quick because I do have to pick Miss Lee up for dance. So for foil, I am using the mink foil. This is the gold. It says silver and gold. So we'll start with this because, you know, I was just thinking King Tut, you got to, you got to do gold. And if these work out, I don't want to waste them. I'll, I'll turn them into something. So this came out of my not favorite foil stash. You guys know I don't want to waste my Creative Vision stamps foil. Okay, so let's see how we do here. I'm just going to actually try to see how much I can fit on one thing here. 
And I'm not going to do my normal dust it and make it pretty because honestly, I don't care. This is an experiment. I want to see how this is going to do compared to the toner ink when I get that. So that'll be another video. So this is all the reactive screen ink. Again, it comes out white. You know, I was even thinking I should have probably tinted that a different color um, just so I could compare it. But it's okay. We'll survive. And normally, yes, I would dust everything off. We're on a little bit of time constraint. Another thing I noticed when they were showcasing using that toner ink that everybody had their mink on five. So I put it on five. I think that's too high, but what do I know? It's not like I do foiling every day. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. <laughs> so... I'm going to cut some more of this foil down. I'm not being very conservative with it. I'm just thinking about speed here. And I'm just going to keep loading these up, and then we'll look at the different qualities of how it worked. And that's what Heidi Swap came out with these for originally, was to run them through her um, stencils, mixed media, um, so I understand the toner ink, but I think it's just because a lot of people wanted an actual ink pad. I will be honest with you. I think we're going to have the same issues with an ink pad. I think it's going to dry out. Uh, the price point is $25, which I think is a little excessive. I mean, you can get this tube for five or $6 and then use your coupon at Joann's. So I think the price point is a little expensive Expensive to spend $25 and it's going to dry out. That's my personal opinion. And I honestly think that we're going to have the same issues we have here where the paper is going to peel up and, um, you know, you're just not going to have a very good foiled image. So we'll see. I do think there is a need for a foiling stamp pad for sure. I think she's on the right track there, but I think maybe the product was rushed coming out um, because like I said, for to put that on a stamp pad, this is not even gonna come out. I can see this didn't even stamp very well. That's like a half an image. Only this is gonna come out. So I'm running them through. I'll let them sit on the side to kind of cool down and then we'll reveal them all. So again, I just took some extra piece of foam. I bet makeup sponge would work too. So this is just a piece of foam that came out of a Hobby Lobby thing. And I used an old gift card and I smeared some reactive paint and stamped with it. And I smeared some reactive ink and stamped with it. Whoa, what did I do? Scared myself. Okay, and I'm using gold foil. So we'll see what these look like, which one comes out better. And again, I have the mink, mini mink set on five. I do recommend if you are going to be doing a lot of foiling to purchase the mink machine. I think that it does give a little bit superior quality over a laminator. That's not too awful bad. I could totally use that. That's my fault for not dusting. That's not bad, actually. You know, I, I should have done black glossy cardstock. You guys will have to remind me when I do my experiments to try black glossy cardstock because I really think foil stands out when you're doing black cardstock. All right, see, this did not come out so well. Maybe that's why I didn't use that. Okay, yeah, that is, this is the, I remember the paper now. So this, we'll talk about. <laughs> Let me reveal these and then I'll talk about what they are. And I have, I'm gonna just do this one more. This extra piece of foil here.
Okay, so this is a perfect example of what was happening. So apparently I had stamped the back of this and didn't like it, so I flipped the paper over. Do you see how it's like a glue and it's pulling that paper off? Do you see that? That's what would happen with um, stamping it. So that's why I stopped doing it. Okay. Let's look at the results here. We have varying different results here. I think there is one common theme though. Okay. So on the regular card stock. Okay. So this is regular um, Nina Solar White cardstock. It was on the desk. I cut it up. Okay. I know for a fact because I remember putting them down one, two, three, four, so I wouldn't touch them. And on these, I used the. Which one did I use now? I have to think about it. Oh, the Reactive Screen Ink, which is like a paint. Okay. I don't know why they don't call it a paint because they called the other one a paint. So on this, it went down pretty thick, and you can even see in the foiling where it's kind of globby. Oops, here we go. Camera, focus. So you can see the kind of, the little bit of globbiness there. Um, where I didn't get enough of the, the ink, you can see where it's kind of dried out here. Um, here's one, kind of the same problem. I didn't get enough at the top there. There's a little bit of texture, not a lot. This one has got all kinds of blank spots in the center there. So, I mean, they're all pretty random. Okay. So that was the reactive screen ink. That was the first one I tried to do. And then I went and I washed everything out. And I would say this is, if I were to grade this, I would say I give it a C. I mean, it works if you want it to work. Does it look great? Not really. Is it worth my time? Not really, because if it doesn't look good, I don't want to use it. So I would say this is a C. Okay. That's using the Reactive Screen ink, which is very thick. Okay. Now, for this one, this really surprised me. This I did on the glossy side of the chrome coat paper. So this is on the glossy side of this chrome coat cover. Not the same as photo paper. Keep that in mind because that's what I was afraid of is heating this up that it might activate the glossiness. But this was using the reactive paint. Same method. Put it on the, on the, the foam here. Use my little scraper card to even it out. Took my stamp stamped on it and because I stamped it on the glossy now this is a much thinner medium so this is kind of runny but look at the image this is almost perfect there's some little excess foiling on there that's because of the mink foil but look at how almost perfect that is this is definitely a B this is a B I mean much better quality of stamping there we don't really have any kind of blobs of ink everything looks pretty smooth there's no thickness difference I'm very impressed that that actually worked because I honestly did not think it was going to work here you can see the first two stampings you can see where the lines are that that excess kind of filled in there and here's the second stamping so I stamped it once and stamped it twice so you can see that that excess, you know, after a couple stampings did come out of the stamp. There's a little bit of texture to this one. But these still look better than the other one did. So all three of these are definitely usable on a card. This one came out really stinking good. <laughs> so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to experiment and try it out with the... Um, toner ink, but I'm also going to run out tomorrow and I'm going to buy some cut, cut and foam where you make your own ink pads because I think, th I think there was two mistakes I was making. One, I was using the Tim Holtz make your own ink pad. Let me see if I have one to show you guys. Here we go. Oh, nope. Well, 
it looks it looks like a distressing pad. It looks like one of these, but it's it's a blank one. I thought I had some. But so I had filled that originally and it did not work. And the reason it didn't work was the ink pad. I think it was because of the felt top on there because it has a fabric felt top. Um it just didn't it didn't work right with with adhering to the ink pad and to the stamp. So I think that was problem number one. So that's why I went to this kind of foamy, squishy, which is very similar to the VersaFine Claire. These are foamy, spongy, squishy pads. Also, like Stampin' Up! has foamy, squishy pads. So I think you need a spongy kind of pad. And I think that's what kind of pad comes on the new Heidi Swap toner ink. The second problem I had was the type of paper. When I was using regular paper... I was getting this. I was definitely getting this where it would just peel right up from the stamp. The paper was ripping. Not a good not a good stamped image at all. But now that I'm using this glossy chrome coat, you can definitely see a difference with the quality. I mean, it just is more even. Now you do have to be careful because it is kind of slick. So you don't want to be moving the stamp around. You want to straight down, straight up. So I think those were the two issues, but I will try out the toner ink. Again, I ordered it from Technique Tuesday. I just ordered the um, toner ink starter pack, which comes with the ink. It comes with the ink pad, and I believe it comes with three of the foam inserts. And it was uh, $24, and then she only charged $3.50 for shipping, and she's already put a shipping label on it. So I should have that in the next three days. And we will compare that, and we'll do the same papers, the same stamp, um, and the same foil on using that toner ink and see how it does. And I do want to practice it also on black paper, so I will have to remind myself to try it on black paper as well. And I will try it on plain black paper and also the glossy black paper, because I think that'll look pretty cool. So that's where I'm at with it. I will let you know as soon as it gets here. Um... I did try to order it from Simon Sis Stamp and Scrapbook.com, but they were all sold out. So we will see how this works in the next few days. But in the meantime, if you have this reactive paint and you have that cut and dry foam, I would try that because if you're gonna throw it away anyway, I would honestly rather just spend, like I said, six or seven dollars on a whole tube of this and putting it on the cut and dry foam and then throw it away versus, um, $25 and I'm going to throw it away anyway just because it's black toner. Um, we'll see what the difference is but like I said I watched the video from Technique Junkies and she had a lot of bare spots and she even said it dries very quickly which is fine but if you have any bare spots on there you're you're not getting the coverage that you need and I do believe she said in a couple of things that um, it's very sticky and it was pulling away. So that's what I, I was like those are the same problems I had so I'll let you guys know. If you have any questions, post them down below. When I get that video uploaded, if you are a subscriber and you have the little wiggly bell checked over here, you will get notification of that. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.